So let's do subversion first. So again, it looks like all of these are things we've installed. Yep, so let's just extract this. And reinstall it. Let's just check the config commands. Install the optional dependencies. So with LZ4 and UTF8 proc, LZ4. Right. So the optional dependencies are outside the BLFS book, so we've got to leave them in. Uh, JUnit gives the location of the JUnit.jar, so we'll have to find that. I imagine that's going to be. Uh, well, it's part of Ant, so um, I think Ant got installed in the opt directory, did it? Oops. Yes, it did. So let's do find opt ant dot jar. Okay, that might need a trailing slash note. Dot right, I wonder if it's named. A oh, version, rather. Um. Maybe it's not part of Ant then, I thought it was. Oh, JUnit4 is a separate... Right, okay. It's a separate jar file, so we've got to leave that out, unfortunately. Do not use the Google Mark testing framework. I think probably what is supplied there is what we need to go with. Oh, hang on, it does say JUnit is included with Apache Ant. Alright, um, this is going to produce loads, I imagine. No. Nope. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's Ant hyphen JUnit. Okay. So that's the path that we want to add in the jar file into this configure command. So we need to copy that bit, add in this switch here with JUnit equals, and we should be able to do, um, let's, let's do another search. I'm not sure if the find command searches links. No, it doesn't. Oh. Yeah, it hasn't, has it? So let's put the slash on the end. Yeah, so it needs slash to find it. Okay. So let's recall that and put in that line there, ant hyphen j unit. So that should find that. Well, it doesn't say that it has. Let's see if we can look through. It's found the JDK.
So I can't see anything there about J unit. Just scanning through quickly. JDK Super Ruby. So it's debatable whether it has found that or not. But because I've run the config a couple of times, I'm just going to get a fresh source directory. Re recall that last config command and run that in. So now we should be able to run make. So for the Java one, it does say one of OpenJDK, Dante's or JIX. So we've got OpenJDK and JUnit4, and it says JUnit is included with Apache Ant. So the fact that we've got one of these and we've got JUnit4, this Java binding should be allowed to be built the way that I interpret that. So let's create some documentation. So here we go, trying to make these Java bindings. Yeah, that does seem to be working. Right, it's actually failed, unfortunately. like it's failed on oh it's tests have failed interestingly so I'm not sure whether that's not sure whether that's actually built it or not or if it's just the tests that are failing for some reason so it may even be these other ones I don't know what these are for So I'll have to see when we install whether anything else happens. I'm going to try the Perl bindings. Just going to run these in individually as they're not chained together with a double ampersand. Just so I know whether they've worked or not. That seemed to work. Let's try the Python ones. Okay, and the pearl ones. And let's test everything now.
Okay, so tests have finished. Um, all passed. Um, the one that's mentioned in the book that is known to fail didn't actually fail. It did um, pass successfully. That one there, upgrade test.py. So, again, what's in the book is not always what you, you'll experience. Um, as you've seen, a lot of the time, tests that are mentioned in the book that fail, don't fail and vice versa. Um, get some failures that are not mentioned in the book. So it's almost like kind of horses for courses. Um, it's never never consistent. And maybe because of what you build, the order you build it, or that just might be comments that are out of date. So if you do experience failures and it's important, and as I said before, it's something that you'd have to investigate to convince yourself that either the test is failing is not important or that you can actually do something to fix the test and allow it to to pass. So it says to test the Java bindings, if you make ch uh, check Java HL and it says the Java, the JUnit HL, or the JUnit testing framework must be in place. Now I don't think that is installed because I, I think from what little I know that it is more about just this JUnit jar file but um, I may be wrong so we can try testing that and the fact that we had the failures earlier on when we're building it um, I wouldn't expect this to be successful uh, and in fact it's failing there it's looked like the same test it was running before um, I don't know if I can pipe that through less to see if we can catch the beginning of the errors no they're not going they're going to Standard error of looks of it, so maybe I'll need to pipe that to something like um, java.hl.log. Java.hl.log, just make sure that's not an existing file. Package org J unit does not exist, so that's yeah. As I say, the the unit test framework, although we passed that jar file in, um, it's not finding it actually. I wonder. Okay. I wonder if I add that JUnit file to the class path that might allow it to build actually. Um, so it's, um, this, is, this is another thing that's wrong here is the they suggest passing it with JUnit to the config command and it's to that I would have thought is the JUnit jar file that's installed with JUnit 4. It's not the one that's in the ant directory. It says no new JUnit is included in the Apache ant. Let's see what dependencies that's got. No, see it hasn't got anything to do with JUnit there. And can be accessed by passing that. Now I think that is the jar file when you install JUnit itself as an entity, not not when you install just ant. And as we've seen, the JUnit file that's in ant is not the one that's got that name JUnit for. So if I type in JUnit, so there's no JUnit there, and we search for JUnit something dot jar, and it didn't find it. The one that's here is called ant JUnit. Dot jar. In fact, there's an ant jar four dot jar there. I wonder if that's the one that should have been passed to configure. I don't know. The jar archive is bigger. 
what we can do is to um, export class path. In fact, I should back this up actually here. Yeah, export class path. Let's uh, use underscore back equals dollar class path. Put that in quotes just in case. And then add, so if I echo class paths, they're all separated by colons, those paths. So if I export if I can type properly, export class path to equal the current value of class path and then add on opt and lib and junit dot jar now if I run the make check jar Rachel to see if in fact let's let's rerun this because that did seem to run some tests no it's still failing So I imagine this check Java Rachel will fail. Now whether it's because I've configured with the wrong jar file, I don't know. Um, what I should do first is I'll um, well let's check the other bindings and test them. What I might do is install this first and then go back and reconfigure with the other jar file and see if that works. And if it does, then I'll carry on and reinstall this with those settings. If it doesn't, then I'll just abandon the Java bindings bit. It does seem to be a bit broken from the inconsistencies in the instructions here. So that's the Perl bindings. I've just run the tests on. It's running the tests on the Python bindings, and I'll run the Ruby ones afterwards. So these look all successful. Let's do the Ruby ones. Right, for some reason, um, a couple of times today my recording has dropped out for some reason, I'm not sure why. Um, so the and now the end bit of, um, what was it, it was Subversion has been missed, but um, that Jar Rachel business, I couldn't get that uh, working properly. Um, so there's, there's some discrepancies in the book. Um, so I just installed subversion with the um, Perl, Python and Bi uh, Ruby bindings and just installed it as we did previously without the Java bit. Um, so I've completed that. Um, just checking my list to see if there's anything else that might have been missed on the recording. Um, just trying to look for subversion.
Oh, it's Pulse Audio I've just installed. So I can do that again, actually, because it didn't take too long. Um... So let's get with it. I was just going to demonstrate QT5 and I noticed it wasn't recording. So if this drops out again, I might have to um, just reboot everything and start again. Uh, so let's remove QT everywhere. And I'll just rebuild this pulse audio again just so that it is actually recorded. Right, um, one thing that I found when I was uh, building it just now was that the Disable Blue Z4 is not recognized by the configure in this version. So this command here is out of date. Um, and also there was another option that I added. Let me recall the configure, uh, which was enable sample rate because it, it came up in the summary as not being found, even though it's one of the optional packages. Now, the reason why it might not have come up, even though it's an optional package, is because it is actually deprecated. Um, so when this finishes, um, oh, well, you'll see it does say deprecated right next to it. In fact, I think I just saw the word deprecated go past. You can see there. So technically, we shouldn't really be using it because it means it's going to be withdrawn pretty soon. Um, and you can see the disabled blue Z has been uh, blue Z four has been taken away because it's not recognised, and disabled blue Z five is also not there because we want that built in. And you can see it's actually found that and it's going to be using it. So those two switches, the two switches were left in last time because we didn't have the blue Z four or blues four uh, or five, rather. So that's that's the configure I've used that's on the screen below. So I'll just run make And just run the checks on that again. So it's passed and all I need to do is install it. And just remove this config file. And Remove it like that. So that's uh, Pulse Audio done and recorded this time.